Good morning, Zeal Church family. If I haven't gotten the honor and privilege of meeting you yet, my name is Ashton, and I serve as the Zeal Kids Director here at Zeal. If you can't see behind me, it looks a little different than it did last week, the week before, and even the week before that. But regardless of where we are, we are just so excited that you're joining us this morning to worship and have church together. As Pastor J.D. has talked about over the last few weeks, that when we are together, God moves, and we are just believing for that for you this morning. And if it's your first time joining us, I just want to say welcome home. If you've not filled out a connection card yet, go to zealchurch.tv slash connect and our connect team, yes, a team of people specifically ready to connect you to all that God has for you here at Zeal and in this season of your life. And another thing we have also is our prayer team. Our prayer team is praying for you right now again as we speak and they would also love to pray for you personally. So if you have any prayer requests, if you're comfortable, go ahead and drop them in the chat and the online host will direct you to one of our prayer team members. But if that's not your style, go ahead and on the screen, click prayer and your prayer request will be sent directly to our prayer team. And again, we would love to stand with you in prayer in this season. Once again, if you look around me, this this is something that we usually don't do, but it's because of your generosity that we've been able to bring church online to you at home during this COVID season. I know things are crazy and they're all up in the air, but the one thing that we know is God is moving, he is doing things, and that involves our generosity and being allowing him to do all that he wants to do with our first. And so if this is your first time joining us at Zeal, you are under no obligation to give. All of this, our service is actually a gift to you. But if you do call Zeal Church home, you can go to zealchurch.tv slash give to give this morning. I won't let this moment pass, sorry, I won't let this moment pass without telling you too about my favorite part, as I mentioned about Zeal, or one of my favorite parts, which is Zeal Kids. Our Zeal Kids team and our students team have been working so hard in this season to provide your kids and your students with small groups, with prayer, with worship, with word, with content online. The list can go on and on, but we just want to let you know, parents, we love you, we're praying for you, Um, we're praying for your kids, and when they need church, it is online for you, so be sure to go to zealchurch.tv slash ZK online to find all of our kids content. Lastly, I want to talk about one of the most exciting things that we have going on at Zeal right now here in this season, and that is our Zeal gatherings. The Zeal gathering is a time where people come and we enjoy church at home, of course, with restrictions, respecting our city's authorities, um, but we have a time of a service just like this that we're about to watch and small groups. So be sure on August 16th to check out our our zeal gathering groups and pastor JD is going to talk more about that this morning but no more of me less of me less of you let's get ready to worship God this morning and before we do I'm going to pray for us and then I'll send it over to pastor Kelly and we will start worship this Sunday morning Father God, we just thank you for all that you're doing here this morning. We thank you for what you're doing in our city, God, and we thank you for what you're doing in our country, in our world, Father. We know that these are such uncertain times and can be so full of fear. We can be so full of fear, God, but we know you are moving. We know that what you promised at the beginning of this year is more, and you still have it in store for us. The more that we've been expecting for is not paused, is not stopped by what the world would say is happening, God, but you are never stopped. And so we just thank you for what you're doing. God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that we get to be together, that nothing stops your church, Jesus. And we're just so grateful that we get to be a part, God. We love you. We worship you. We give you all the praise. We thank you again for all that you're doing in this season, Lord. And it's your name we pray. Amen. Let's worship together. What's up, church? Hope you guys are doing well. Come on, right where you are. Let's stand to our feet. Let's lift, let's lift our eyes to the Lord. Let's give God our heart. Let's worship him today. Come on. Love that never ends Love Deeper than the ocean Mercy Mercy to the guilty Mercy Mercy never ending Everything Everything I've ever wanted Lord is in you Everything you've ever said to me is still true I won't hesitate to give you everything I've got I won't wait another second to give you my heart Even when I walked away, you held me in your arms Jesus, 
just like you. Be like you. I wanna be just like you. We surrender. Lord, we just sit in your presence today with thanksgiving, Lord. We just ask that whatever you can do through people, do it through us. Lord, today we just surrender everything that is keeping us from knowing you better and from becoming closer to your heart, Jesus. We lay down our fears, our desires, and our cares, our worries, and our dreams, Lord. We give it all to you, and we just say, have it all. Lord, have your way in us.
to God Have your throne within my heart Let's sing I hear Father, this is a moment where we choose to surrender to you. This is a moment, Father, where we choose to surrender. God, I want to pray for the person who feels like they don't belong in this moment or they have nothing left. For the person who feels like they've, they've lost hope or lost friends. Father, I want us to realize in this moment of surrender, when we say our yes to you, when we commit our lives to you, Father, when we give you our yes, you take care of the rest. And so, Father, in a fresh way, Father, there's so many of us that have said yes before. There's so many of us that have maybe sang a song of surrender before, but in a fresh way, I'm asking you, to do something special in the moment of our surrender. Can we sing that? Here I am. Here I Come on, like you've never told him before. Come on, fresh surrender. Fresh surrender. Here I am. Here I am. Come on, a little bit louder. Let him know. Here I am. Come on, stand up from that couch. Here I am, Lord. Come on, lift your hands. You can have it all. You can have it all. Come on. Here I you for a moment what God can do with your all because some of us the moment we begin to tell God that we want to give him our all is the same moment where we diminish what we have as though it's not enough and I just want to encourage you this morning I want to provide some spiritual shock therapy and let you know that whatever you have is good enough you can give God what you have it can be a little and a little goes a long way with our Lord and our Savior come on jump off that couch give God some praise let everything that has breath praise the Lord come on you can do better than that give God your best praise come on lift a shout to God let him know how good he is Woo! I feel something in the room this morning. And I think what it is is, I think God shows up at the places where he's praised. I believe God shows up. The Bible says to praise him loud on the cymbal. Nate, let me hear you praise him loud on the cymbal. Just as loud as it can go. Come on, play him on those strings. Come on, play him with those hands. Give God your best. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Woo! Well, listen, I'm fired up excited that you're here i just want to remind you how good jesus is and i had some people in the room that sat down and some of you sat down but
But I'm going to have you stand right back up. Come on, stand up in this room like you have expectation that God can do something. Let me just tell you what Jesus has never done. Jesus has never failed his promises. Jesus has never told a lie. Jesus died, resurrected, came back to life, and has all the power. He sits at the right hand of God, making intercession for us, believing for us. So I need you to know you showed up at a moment where we have hope. You showed up with some people that have faith. Today's going to be better than yesterday. I feel something in my spirit of expectation, of hope, of joy, of love. I know a God who saves. I know a God who redeems. I know a God who fulfills. I know a God who can heal cancer and migraines. I know a God who can heal depression and give joy to those that are in the middle of sorrow. I know a God. They say Christianity is one beggar, one beggar telling another beggar where they found some bread. I'm just one beggar telling another beggar where I found some bread. And I'm just telling you this morning, whether you're watching with some friends, some kids, some neighbors, or some enemies, that God is here. God loves you. You can do this. Amen? Well, you better have a seat this time before we get going too hard. I'm excited about all that God's doing. I'll talk just a little bit about that in a moment. But I want to take you to one of the promises. I, I know we talked about the promises of God. He's never failed. Isn't that encouraging to you? Isn't it encouraging that God has never failed on his promises? He doesn't take them back. He's not an Indian giver. You guys know what that all growing up? They said, I'll give something to you. And then, yeah, he's none of that. God never fails. In fact, in the comments right now, why don't you just tell us what's something, what's something God did in your life where it would just prove, come on, extend your testimony. You know what the word testimony means? God do it again. Come on, what has God done in your life? What is something he saved you from? What is, what is a story where God has ripped you out of depression, ripped you out of anger? I know somebody has a story, and I'm just rejuvenated this morning because I realized I woke up in a world full of failure, full of broken promises, but then I look to God's word, and I look in my past and say, if he brought me this far, if he took me out of depression in 2011, surely he can do it again, and surely he can do it for you. I'm just here fired up. You know why? Because Jesus... Jesus never fails. Jesus is the prescription to every problem I've ever had. And I just believe he's here. I love the inaugural speech of God from heaven as the delivery of Jesus was, his name shall be called Emmanuel. God with us. There's no place that you can go. There's no place you've ever been where God wasn't there. And I want you to know in a world filled with problems, lift your head, put a smile on. Put your shoulders back. Jesus has this. He's got you. He never fails his promises. In fact, we've been delivering the promise of God for three weeks and unpacking one of the core promises that Jesus has. And so if you have your Bibles or iPhones, anything you have, come on, turn to Matthew chapter 18. If you don't have your Bibles, it's cool. We'll put it right on the screen there for you. Matthew chapter 16, rather, verse 18. Jesus is making a promise. In some of your Bibles, you'll see it in red, and we, we take those things super serious. Anybody, once again, that predicts their death and resurrection and does it, you should listen to that person. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, a guy who was there. Check out how he unpacks the promise of God. Jesus said this, you are Peter, a rock. This is, on, this is the rock on which, watch this. I will put, Jesus saying this, I will put together my church. Everybody say church. Jesus promises that he would put together his church. Now watch this description. See if you can feel it. You guys brought your feelers this morning to bring your feelers. A church so expansive with energy. You ever, you ever drove by that place and uh, people standing out front, you know, bodyguards, and you heard, the, and you're like, what? What in the world is happening? Listen to the description that Jesus gives us about his church, a church so expansive, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell, not even quarantine, not even feuds, not even depression, not even cancer, not even betrayal, not even loneliness. We'll be able to keep it out. So we've been, for the last several weeks, and if you haven't watched, subscribe and go to YouTube and check out the promise that we've been unpacking over the last several weeks. 
And we've realized that God promised something. What did he promise when he left? I'm going to leave something called the church so expansive with energy. And one of the things that we've come to understand is that a lot of us have, a lot of us have been told that you are the church. And we've realized that's not reality. You are not the church. But you and you, ah, you are the church. And what we realize is God promised this assembly, this gathering. And the second week we learned that the promise carried the presence of God. We tried to describe it, describe it with this word glory, meaning if, if you get there, if you get around God's people and God's presence is there, God does something in the room that it's one of those you just had to be there. And you're just driving by going, what's happening in there? Jesus promised and on the backside of his promise, he gave his presence. When he left, he sent the Holy Spirit. He sent them up to a room and sent the Holy Spirit to help start this thing, this church, this gathering, this assembly. Last week, we talked about the connection. We told you to check your connection because oftentimes people are mad at the dryer. They're mad at the microwave. They're mad at the stove and it's not the stove or the TV. They need to go to the breaker box. They have a connection issue. The TV doesn't have a power issue. They have a connection issue. And we know that when the presence of God is there, the power of God is there. You didn't show up to a powerless moment. Don't you love that? I could stand up and praise God right now. I don't need a cymbal. I don't need a guitar. I don't need encouragement. I don't have to be hyped up or hoped up. I just know that God is powerful. You could not convince me. Otherwise, because in my own life, God has done for me what I could never do for me. There's power that rests on the presence that comes with the promise. And then we have Matthew chapter 18, two chapters later, the guy who was there watching Jesus, check out what he said to further this promise, this presence, this power. He says, when two of you get together, everybody say together. together. You know what I love about the church? We're together. We're together. We're unified. It's expansive with energy, but unified in mission. Ever expanding, ever growing, but running the same play. I love that. Everybody say together. Yeah. Come on, tight together. You ever, you ever met that stubborn person who's just not going to say something? Come on, say together. together. I ain't going to say nothing in church. Well, find another one where you don't have to say anything. Sorry, I've been in quarantine. It's a little testy. Well, I, I can be honest. The Bible says open your mouth. You can't praise the Lord quietly. Why? Because it's the praise isn't for you. It's for God. If he wants it loud, I'll shout. David said, I'll be even more undignified than this. When you've been saved like I've been saved and forgiven like I've been forgiven and healed like I've been forgiven, I like being loud because I'm excited about it. I shout God down because God has done so much for me. Together. Clap together. Give together. Serve together. Yesterday, I think about all the teams, people out yesterday serving all over the city that we love. Just beautiful to be together on anything at all, the scripture says, on earth and make a prayer of it. I love this part. My father in heaven goes into action. Some of you this morning or whenever you're viewing this, you know, this thing sits on demand so some people can watch it later down the road. But it may find you and you, you, you need somebody to go into action for you. You need somebody that's a benefactor. You need somebody to invest in you. You need an angel investor. You need a backer. You need a boss who loves you. And I'm just letting you know, the greatest backer on planet earth is not in human form. It is the father. The Bible says, if you ever get together on anything and pray, the father goes into action. What that means practically is God steps out of heaven and begins to do things that you've been trying to do for 25 years. There's power when the father moves his hand. Don't you remember that when the father moved his hand, the canyons on earth were formed. When the father moved his hands, the oceans begin to roar. When, the, when God began to speak and move his hand, the entire earth was formed at a mere word and movement of God. The father can do what we could never do. And this is the power, the promise, the power of not just you, but you and you. That's why you must fight for unity. That's why you must fight for the unity of changing the world, loving the world like Jesus. I like this mask right here. This guy's got a mask on. It says, love your neighbor. That's Jesus talk. Love your neighbor. Work together. God promised it. The presence follows the promise. The power 
follows the presence of the gathering. So we begin to pray and ask God, God, we know that in the middle of a pandemic, what you need to do is find something to hold to. What can we hold to? Well, you can hold to the promise that whenever God's people get together by say together, together. if you get together, there's presence, there's power. And so I'm excited to announce, can you have a, can we do a drum roll? Come on, do a drum roll. Come on, if you're driving, pull over on the side of the road, put your hands on your legs and start drum rolling. Because next week, we officially launch Zill Gatherings. Come on, somebody. You've been stuck in an office. You've been stuck alone. And God's saying, get to a gathering. So here's what it is. Let me explain it. Let me explain it. A gathering, okay, a gathering is this. It is a service, a snack in the middle. Come on, somebody. A service, a snack, and a small group. So imagine you can bring your friend. No, let me just brag on their staff real quick. Can I brag on them for a second? I knew we could do this. I knew that our staff was bright enough, smart enough, and had the work ethic. I just want to brag on your staff that is honored to serve you that work all throughout the week. Come on, give it up for them. Thank you. I knew we could do it. I knew we could do it in a health conscious way, in a safe conscious way, and a culture conscious way. Next week, we will launch 15 locations in our city that are safe, that are healthy, but also feel like zeal, look like zeal, smell like zeal, signage, people serving. It's going to be unbelievable. Did you know in the last three weeks, check this out, the last three weeks, the staff has not only came up with a plan that already dozens and dozens of churches have heard about. We haven't even launched yet. It's a beta. We, we don't even know it's going to work. We're going to need your help as they launch, but 15 locations they've trained. Check this out. 88 people in the last three weeks, our staff have personally trained how to pull off a location, whether it's a house or a business or a backyard or a rooftop that is safe. And I'm so excited to announce it because here's what I know. If we will gather, there's a promise of God's presence and his power. And you can trust that we're working our tails off for it to be safe. And I know some of you may be sick, I know there are many people watching that that are older and you feel susceptible. Listen, you can continue to stream, but if you're able to, I encourage you, the inconvenience of a mask is worth it to get around God's people and get in the community. So I'm excited to announce it. And I'm asking you this week to go on the website, click gatherings and find one that's closest to your house. Go ahead and register because all of them are limited according to the state and local guidelines. And I'm encouraging you, find a gathering. It'll be good for your soul. Gatherings launch next week. And don't miss what God will do when you get around the people of God and the presence of God and eventually experience the power of God for your life. And I'm excited to announce something else. I'm not going to touch it too much, but we're launching a brand new series next week. And here's what it's called. You ready for this? Now, some of you old school people remember this, but back in the day, there used to be this song and a lot of you young guns uh, have no clue uh, what the song is, but here's how it goes. It used to say, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back, everybody say, take back. The old song says, I took back what they stole from me. And because it's old school, we had to repeat that. I took back what they stole from me. I took back what they stole from me. And here's what I know. I know there are some people under the sound of my voice and you feel like somebody has trespassed on your property, put a tent in the ground and begin looting your life. And I want you to imagine you are walking into the tent that's on your property, walking into the middle of tent, looking at the enemies dead in the eye and saying, I came to get back what's mine. Get off my property. You can't have my joy. You can't have my peace. You can't have my kids. You can't have my students. You can't have my purity. You can't have my confidence. I'm coming to get back what is mine. I'm ready to preach that series more than you know. Next week's message is called Get Off My Property because here's what I know. God has given you jurisdiction in your life. He's given you purpose. And Satan has no authority to be on your property. I said he came on your property. So next week, we're going to help you get back the things that you feel like are stolen from you. I want to encourage you. Do not miss this moment. It's different. You have to reserve your place for safe standards and snack standards. Come on, somebody. But we're resourcing every location so you can actually bring friends. Because there's people that may never show up to a big building, but they'll show up to somebody's house. And I'm encouraging you. 
Take advantage of this moment. God knew this would come. Go on. Invite your friends. Reserve seats as the locations pop up on the website today and this week. And let's take advantage of the promise, the presence of God that brings the power of God. Amen. I'm excited about that. I believe it's going to be a party. Everybody say party. party. Don't you like the word party? Yeah. Some, of you, some of you are so hesitant to say that. Because you, you, you've, uh, I'm going to say this southerly, you done, you done got too saved. To where you can't even say you like to party. Come on, somebody. I still like to party. I, I think it's a lot of fun. You don't have to have the sin and the guilt, the guilt and debauchery and you don't have to get drunk. I just like to party. I, I love the essence of a party. How many of you guys in high school, <laughs> some of you, it's going to be hard for you to answer. How many of you guys, come on, raise your hand in here. How many of you guys liked to party back in the day? Christians in here going, some of y'all partying right now. They ain't laughing too much, but it's true. It's true. I like, I like, I like a party. You know what I love about a party? I love, I love that in a party, there's like music that's fun. People are laughing. People are telling jokes. People are telling bad jokes. Come on, somebody. <laughs> jokes that don't make any sense. And people are laughing. And people are meeting new people and excited. And guys are meeting girls. And girls are meeting guys. And y'all know how that works. Come on, somebody. Don't, don't stop preaching when I'm, don't stop talking to me when I'm preaching good. This is real. Come on, you in the church. If you're single, you can mingle. Let's go. Right? I love a party. I love, I love the music and the vibe of it. You know when you show up to the house and they have that charcuterie sitting on the island? Come on, somebody. Got a good lemonade. Woo! Got some good, good music there. See, I, I, love, I love about a party that people aren't squabbling over stupid things usually. They're just having fun together. I love how when the right song comes on, it doesn't matter where you're from. I'm from North Memphis. And I just, I want to be honest with you. I'm not necessarily the most country guy in the world. But if you put on Garth, I can join in. Yeah. That's just true. It doesn't matter where you're from. If you, all of a sudden, if I will sail my vessel till the river. See, but the moment we start singing the river, everybody, no matter where they're from, probably knows them. If they don't, they just go. You know what I'm talking about? It's just that way for boys to men. I love a party. I love a party. Boys to men. Cause I'm down on bended knee. Bum, 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 bum. See, I don't know the words, but I feel it. You feel it. Do you feel that? Come on, somebody. I love a party. I, lo I love a party. Christians should love a party. The Bible says we should be marked by our love for each other and joy. Let me give you another word for joy. Pleasure. It should be good to be around us. David said, I was glad when they said to me, we're going to a gathering. It was, I wasn't sad when they said to me, I was fired up. Why? Because there's something about being with God's people that should look like a party. The real kind of party. The guilt-free kind of party. The full of joy kind of party. Jesus described his church. And when, when I look deeper into it, it sounds more like a party. Unison and fun and music and people choosing to laugh. People walking in the door and forgetting about their day and embracing this vibe, this energy, this peace, this joy, this hope. Jesus said, so expansive with energy. The moment I start talking about party, some of us are religious and some of us are too buttoned up to say the word, such a word in an ecclesiastical manner and environment. It's not so theological or philosophical to say the word party in church. I digress and I push back. I think it's incredibly biblical to look at the church as this ever expanding party. You say party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me break it down for you. God made this thing. We were humans. We broke it. He sent Jesus that fixed it. Maybe that's why he describes it. It should be ever expanding with energy. Some of you say, no, no, no I, I just, I'm not picking up what you're putting down. Well, let me go to God's word because a doctor should take doctor's advice. Pretty smart dudes. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Luke, here's what Dr. Luke said about this first church that Jesus built because you don't get to decide what church is like because you ain't Jesus. The church needs to look like what Jesus says and he says so expensive with energy. And Luke said this when the day of Pentecost came, chapter two, verse one, 
On the day of Pentecost, in other words, the 50th day, the church was together in an upper room as a gathering. They were all together, everybody say together. They were all together in one place. Now you skip down through some verses at the incredible things that God began to do. And go to verse 12 and 13. And what you hear in this setting is you hear the response that builds the opinions and the reputation of what that church thing feels like and sounds like. Check what the outsiders, the people outside of the gathering said about church. Because I'm here to bring the theology of party back into the body of Christ. Check this, what this is. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? What's going on up there? That's what they heard. Now watch this, watch this. This is biblical. Watch this. this is. Some, however, made fun of them. Some of you are making fun of us right now. Some of them made fun of this and said, they have had too much wine. Let me ask you a question. How powerful and fun, how much laughter would there have to be for the people outside of a gathering to say, they must got on some wine, like they're drunk. I want you to hear and feel the origin of our faith that when God's people gathered, it should be a party. When you show up in a bad mood, you leave in a good mood. When you show up hopeless, you leave hopeful. When you show up with anger, you live with peace. Being with Jesus is a party. It's full of joy and laughter. I love the song, Say You Are, and watching you smile when you sing it because he is everything he said he would be. And we should be everything we say that he says we should be. He says ever expansive with energy. We've talked about the promise of God. We've talked about the presence of God, the power of God. Today, I want to talk about the party with God. I want to do something real quick. I want to throw a party. Okay, you ready? Uh, Danny, Danny, I need you to help me out real quick. Danny, right now you're playing this like soulful, yeah, yeah this soulful like thing. I need you to kick it up. Give, give me like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me this like groove that people can move to. Like give us, give us your part of it. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Now watch this. You feel that? It's a good start. Nate, give us, give us a little something. Okay. something to it okay all right see when you add when you add Danny's part when you add Nate's part Alex give me a little groove a little chicka chicka ah yeah all right come on we're gonna kick it up here we go one two three let's go hey come on hey come on get your clap on This is church. Some of you don't think this is biblical, but when you feel the presence of God, it should be fun. You should get a smile on your face. This should be good. Okay? One, two, three, four, and one. Now check this out. <laughs> That's pretty good, by the way. By the way, they, did you know anything about They knew nothing about what they were going to play. But here's what I knew. I knew if Danny would do his part. Come on, somebody. I knew if I could get Nate to do his part, if I can get the guy with the camera to do his part, they call it three-part harmony because it's a symphony when you do your part and I do my part. You know what I figured out about the word party? You can't spell the word party without part. I think God put the Y on the end of the part to remind you that the Y means you. And when you do your part and you do your part and you do part, we end up being the body of Christ. There's a party that happens in heaven. There's a party that happens in earth when you do your part. Come on, somebody. Do your part. You got to do your part. You know, when, when you're going to do a party at the house, you decide you're going to do it big. And you call everybody and say, I've got a gathering coming next week. And it's a, it's a service. You're going to worship together. Be small. In other words, you don't just come and worship, but you get to talk it out. I think it could be a thicker glue. You don't just hear someone. You get to do it and talk it out. It's going to be beautiful. But when you're, going over to, when you're going over to somebody's house, when you're going to a party, what do you ask? Come on, you're from the South, some of you. What can I bring? 
What can I bring? There you go. Somebody said cobbler. That's what you would bring. What, what would you bring? What would you bring? Somebody said Dr. Pepper. Okay, what, what else would you bring? Come on, in the comments. God's trying to throw a party. What would you bring to it? There we go. Chips and dip. Come on, somebody. I'm feeling that. A little, little queso. A little queso here. A little bit of God's bird. Come on, Chick-fil-A. Come on, Chick-fil-A. What else? Who's going to bring some dessert? Come on, somebody. Banana pudding. Banana. Woo! She said banana. Woo! Come on, somebody. Banana pudding is from the Lord. Woo! Blessings and praises. BP. Banana pudding. It gets a rename. Come on. Come on, say, what can I bring? Can I tell you what God's always been trying to do? If you don't believe he's interested in a party, read the book of Genesis. How he builds Eden. Everything that you need. Come on, somebody. Real organic sugar. Some of you are fasting, so you appreciate that. God designed earth to eventually look like heaven. You know what our people need? They need to walk into environments. They've been stuck in quarantine. And people like you and I should figure out how to make it feel like a party. Pe neighbors should be like, what's, what's happening in there? Too much joy for pandemic. Too much excitement. Too much worship. Too much generosity. We should make it like a party. And I just think that's what God's doing. You see that in the story of the prodigal son. The father represents the father in heaven. He's wanting lost kids to come home. And what he tells the ones who are already in the tent, the believers, your job's to prep the party. Hey, church. Hey, church. You, you aren't the church, but you and you, you're the church. Let's get ready to party. People need this joy. They need this eternal smile that you can't wipe off my heart. They need that joy. The question is, what can you bring? Because God's party requires God's people because he promised it on the back of our togetherness. And so I want to help you in these final moments, not just have the promise of God that carries the presence of God, that delivers the power of God. I want you to clearly understand your part in the party because you can't have the party without your part. You can't have the party without your part. Some of you have been missing out on purpose for four or five months. You just have this unsettling feeling that I don't know why I'm here. And I want to hand deliver the scripture that helps you understand that when you find your part in his plan, purpose becomes very clear. So you guys saying, what can I bring? Everybody say that. What can I bring? I'm doing some Southern hospitality training experiments right now. Say it like this. What can I bring? Now you got to say it like you're really going to bring something. Some of you are like, what can I bring? And you never show up with anything. Don't be those people. Come on, bring some pudding. Come on, say, what can I bring? Sweet tea? <laughs> they repeated after me, sweet tea. I like this group of people. I'm going to help you. In fact, on your notes, I want you to write this down. And if you're not taking notes, I want you to write this down. I want you to write B. Under that A, I like to spell things. P, A, on your phones that works too. P, A, R, T. What's my part? What can I bring? And I'm just going to walk through because I want you to have purpose, but you can't find eternal purpose without finding your earth side part. You have a part to play. The Bible says before the foundations of the earth, God created you and he had a purpose for you. He has a part for you to play in his plan. So P A R T. We're almost done. We're almost done. I just want to give you your part to play. Okay. Cause you asked me what you could bring. Here it is. Here's the first one. P you know what you can do? You can pray and fast. You can do that. You can pray. Now some of you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't, I don't really. Uh, okay. I get it. What's, what's the big deal. I, I knew I could pray before you told me that's not necessarily blowing my mind. Can I encourage you that when you pray, the Bible says, we've already read it, the Bible says that the Father goes into action. Think about that. You can make the Father go into action. When you come together and when you pray, the Father goes into action. I wrote this down in my notes. The most essential devotion of the believer is prayer and fasting. 
because few things move the hand of God like people who pray and do without food to make space for the impossible. One of my favorite verses, this is a life verse for me in prayer and fasting. Mark 9, 29. The disciples are having a hard time because they've tried to argue it out, cast it out, pray it out. They couldn't make anything happen and they came to Jesus. What do we do? He said, oh, these kind of issues, those kind of issues, those only come out when you pray and you fast. So, hey, believer, hey, person who is yet to believe, I want to encourage you. And I have a major announcement. We have been praying and fasting for the last seven days. We've been streaming it online, but I'm here to announce. In fact, there's people in this room working that have no clue, serving that have no clue. Tomorrow morning, we are able to have our first physical gathering. And here's what I'm going to tell you. At 6 a.m., we're going to have temperature checks. We're going to have masks. I know it's inconvenient, but the connection's worth inconvenience. At 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, I'm asking you to meet me on site if you're able, if you're healthy, if you're capable. On site. At 6 a.m., we're going to have prayer and fasting. Come on, make some noise if you believe God does incredible things when we pray and we fast. God is getting ready to move some things. What can I bring? What can I bring? You can pray and you can fast. What's your part? Meet me at 6 a.m. We've, we've worked our tail off in order way to, to stream it live for those who will be at home. But also for those who are able to be on site, we have a way to make it safe for you and provide distancing in an unbelievable environment. And here's what I know. If God's people will pray and fast, I believe more than ever before, God is going to heal our land. What can you bring? You can bring your prayers. The Bible says the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. You know what that means? When you've been graced by God, not in your own accord, not what you can do, but what God can do through you, when you pray, God begins to open things up. What can you bring? You can pray and fast. Here's your next thing. Write this down if you're taking it. Here's the A, your availability. Your availability. What I've realized in the pandemic is because so much of us have had to be precautious and so much of us have had to really think and, and put up some necessary boundaries. If you're not careful, those boundaries can make their way into your spiritual world. And you can start saying no to God. Say, no, this is not my season to make a difference to serve. This isn't my season to do that. No, no, there is never a good season to give God a no. So here's my encouragement. Give God your yes. What would it look like if today you began to say, you know what, Jesus, whatever you could do through a person, I'm I'm signing up all over again. I'm giving you my yes. There's some people that need life change and their life change is on the other side of my yes. So God, I'm giving you a fresh yes. Come on, if, if you believe that and if, you, if you're watching you believe that, just type, just say it out loud. Yes, I'm giving God my yes. I'm, I'm, I'm playing my part in the party. I'm playing my note. I'm going to give God my yes. Whatever I have, God can get it. What can I bring? You can pray and fast. Give God your availability. Here's what that means practically. Give God a blank check Here's the, for this season. God, if you say it, I'll do it. The great men of faith weren't people who were more capable. Perhaps they were only more available. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. So let's just decide. Can we just decide as a people of God, that we're going to give God our yes. We're trying our best to launch something in this city. 15 locations. You ought to reserve. Locations should be, the locations should be filled by tomorrow. Because it's saying, God, if it's going to be safe, I'm giving you my yes. I'm going to do whatever I can to spread this good gospel. You get my yes. Here's the R. Are you ready? My reach. My reach. Let me ask you a question. What's within your reach? Who is a better question? Who is within your reach? Who's close to you, but far from God? If you ask the question, what can I bring to the party to play my part in the party? Who's in your reach? Because I invite you to do something this week. I challenge you, church. When we launch physical gatherings this Sunday, my challenge is find out who's in your reach. Send them a text message. Hey, we're hanging out at a 
We're hanging out at a gathering at a location. We're hanging out at a house. And I want you to come with me. It's going to be safe. They provide everything that you need. You're going to get a first-time guest gift. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to hang out together. They're going to have masks. It's going to be safe. There's going to be social distancing. Not because everybody likes it or agrees. We're just error on the side of safety just so we can gather. And I want to encourage you to be there with me. And text them this link, okay? Text them the link, zillchurch.tv slash gathering. It has frequently asked questions. It has our answer about safety. It has all the different locations they can choose and they can reserve. Reach out to people so that we can get them with people in the presence of God to experience the power of God. That's your part, church. The last thing Jesus said is go and make disciples. He's saying go and reach out to somebody, text somebody, call somebody because God is trying to throw a party, but he can't get the party without us playing our part. He intentionally removed himself and allowed himself to be used through you because people would need you to help them walk to the promise of God. So do your part, pray and fast. I am calling our church to pray like never before. I'll be here at 6 a.m. Let's do it together. Availability, I want you to reach out to people. And here's the last part. And some of you, this will scare you because you grew up like me in the church. The moment you hear this word, you're terrified. Some of you are going to click off right now. Here it is, the word tithe. Write that down. I'm going to explain to you, though. Because some of you think this is about money, and you've missed it. And I apologize on behalf of everybody who's taught the word tithe solely as a money thing. (laughs) There's so much more to it. In fact, I want to give you a scripture. Because the tithe, the original language would be tenth. But most importantly, it is what is first. God wants your first. What's the part you can play? Give God your first. Your first of what? Here it is. I'm going to give you three T's. Write these down. Your first of your time. What would it look like in your life if you checked with God before you checked your phone? You check scripture before you check your email. You check the voice of God before you check your voicemail. What would it look like if he got your time? Then he got your talent. That's the second T word your talent, your gifts. You are gifted. Listen to me. Some of you have been told that you're not gifted, that you're not good enough. The devil is a lie. You have been given gifts. You have talent. There's something about you that makes you you. And that something is called gifts. It's specific to you. Decide now that God gets those gifts first, that he gets your availability. What is that? If I have it, God gets it. And then he gets your treasure. We believe as believers that God is a good God and that all the finance that comes to us, yes, it also includes our finance, but all of it doesn't belong to us. We don't believe we're that good. Like, you're good, but God has been so good to us that we just say, God, I'm returning the first. Now, some of you are like, that's Old Testament, and, and, and I get it. I grew up, my excuse for generosity was also, that's Old Testament. Let me ask you a question. If Jesus said it, would you do it? The people in the room were like, I don't know. So let me ask you again. <laughs> If Jesus said it, would you do it? If it was in the New Testament, would you do it? You sure? I got a scripture for you. Check this out. Luke chapter 11, verse 42. Words are in red because Jesus said them. Watch this. He's screaming at the people who said they were religious, but they weren't generous. They were generous in the wrong places. They thought it was just about certain things. And Jesus doesn't want some of your heart. He wants all of your heart. What's your part to play? Give God all of your first. Just to pre-decide. God gets my first. That's my part to play. I don't have to do everything. I do my first and God takes care of the rest. Luke 11, 42, Jesus said, what sorrow awaits you Pharisees, you religious hypocrites. Watch this. For you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens. So a tithe historically was tithe of everything. The herb gardens, but you ignore justice and the love of God. You thought it was just one thing. Now watch this. You should tithe, comma, yes. Uh Uh-oh, New Testament and Jesus. You say, why would Jesus say, yes, you should tithe? Does he want my money? If it took talking about your money to get your heart, yes. Jesus says, you should tithe. I want the first, watch this. But do not neglect the more important things. They were tithing of herb gardens. He says, I don't just want that. I don't want you to tithe of everything. And by the way, do not neglect the more important things. In other words, that's just the floor. God has so much for you. You say, what's my part? Because God's trying to throw a party. I'm praying that we throw parties that wake people out of depression. People are so heavy. Let's throw a party. What's your part? What can you bring? 
pray and fast because God begins to move mountains when God's people pray and fast. 6 a.m. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. on Saturday, we're able to do it safely. Availability. Give God your yes. Just pre-decide. If you have an opportunity, show up to a gathering and be like, hey, can, how can I help? You need me to bring something? I, tell me how to do it in a safe way because they have safety protocol. And just ask, how can you help? Reach. Who can you text today, right now? Hey, I'm going to a gathering. Here's a look. There's one in the gold. There's one here. I found one here. Let's go together. You don't even have to bring. We have masks. We have everything for you. It's going to be safe. Reach out to somebody. And then the tithe means let's be people who decide. God gets our first. Because you know what I figured out? Order affects outcome. What you go to first best defines your day. So I've been teaching my kids how to master their mornings. Becton has seven things he does every morning to get in a rhythm of putting the right things in order. Because life is like dominoes. When you put the right thing first, suddenly life, our spirit, our finances, our emotions, we have so much more momentum. Not just the kind of momentum you could create, because you're really good, you could create some momentum. But what would it look like if you had the God kind of momentum? The kind of momentum that didn't make any sense at all, where you had to say, I don't know how to explain this, it's just God. I've got more joy, more friends. I have less guilt, more happiness. It's all God. I gave God first, and he took care of the rest. I believe God is trying to throw a party. And I'm challenging us to play our part. You can't have a party without your part. Now, I know the moment that I begin to put the mission of God on the people, you feel the weight, don't you? Like, man, I have a part to play. And some of that's really good. Some of it's good to realize changing the world is our issue. Jesus did not leave a government. Jesus left a church. He says honor the government, we do that, but he left the church. It's our responsibility to party people out of depression, to party people out of loneliness, to party people out of anger, and to party people out of sickness because he designed a church that when we come together, it was like a party. But I know there's some of you that the moment I talk about you playing a part and you playing a part, the moment I talk about you playing your part is the moment you feel discredited and disqualified. So I must tell you about this good gospel. Gospel means good news. The good news is 2,000 years ago. Hundreds of people have seen this, wrote about it, has changed the world. The largest family on earth are people who are imperfect, who heard about this man, this God man named Jesus, who came from heaven to earth, lived amongst the people. They knew him, they saw him, lived a perfect life. Even his brother called him the son of God. Do you know how good of a brother you would have to be for your own brother to say you are the son of God? It's unbelievable. You have to be pretty dang good. He was brutally murdered on a cross. Intentionally, he chose it so that he could pay for our sin. God sent him to live a perfect life. You know why? Because if he pardoned your sin, he gave you a part in the plan. Woo! The reason you're good enough and the reason God can give you a part in his plan to heal planet earth is because he pardoned your sin and thus gave you a part in the plan. You know why you can have purpose? Because God pardoned your sin. And some of you, good news has become old news and you're just okay with that. You're used to it. You're used to being pardoned, but I just refuse to get used to being pardoned. I'm here to tell you the reason your part matters is because Jesus pardoned your sin. His pardon paved the way for your part. So today, if you're hurting, if you're broken, I've got good news. If you're put together and you're holy and you're perfect, I apologize for the entire message. But if you're broken and you're hurting and you're flawed like me, congratulations. You just got the job. You just got the job. And when you find that part, when we launch gatherings, you say, how can I help? How can I show up? I'm going to go, I'm going to figure out how. I'm going to step over inconvenience and step into purpose and step into passion on behalf of people that need it. You know what you're going to find? Fulfillment. You're going to be fulfilled when you find your part in the plan. You say, well, how do I get that? It starts by receiving the pardon. The Bible says that you're washed like snow. You're rinsed of your sin and your guilt, the impurities of life, the things that have happened to you. The things you've chose, 
You say, man, I didn't grow up in church. Neither, neither did a bunch of us. I don't understand the Bible yet. Neither do a bunch of us. But what we know is we're some beggars telling some other beggars where we found some bread and he has a name and his name is Jesus. And today, if you need him, I found my part in life. My, my part in the reason I'm so full of joy, genuine joy, genuine joy is because I found my part in his plan. I don't think, I know we're close to perfect, but I have joy because I found my part. That's telling people like you that Jesus loves you, that he's your advocate, that he cares about you, that he wipes away tears and wipes away sin. He heals us from shame and guilt and sickness. And he brings us into a part that fulfills us. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, come on, moms, dads, students, single mommies, granddaddies. If you want to receive the free gift of salvation, you said, I'm not ready yet. I still got a bunch of junk. Did you know that sin is the only thing God doesn't have, he can't create, that he actually wants? Give him your sin. Your part right now is easy. Like, give him your sin, give him your shame, give him your disbelief, and choose by faith to trust Jesus. You've tried it on your own. Trust Jesus today. And in a moment, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to pray the prayer. Pray it with us. Click a button that says, I've decided. I've raised my hand, decide to follow Jesus. And let's together start to gather. We can gather anytime, anywhere. We can have gatherings all over the nation, all over the world. You can start one in your home. But let's begin to gather and let's find our part. But it starts with this incredible part. Won't you pray this prayer with me? Dear Jesus, come into my life. Set me free of my sin and my shame. Today, I choose you, Jesus. Save me. Pardon me for my sin. I'm asking for my part and my purpose in your plan. I'll serve you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we celebrate the people who just made that decision? Come on. Come on. So proud of you. I'm telling you, listen, it's the best decision you have ever made. And next week, we're going to help you get off the couch of your life, walk onto that property, walk into the tent that the enemy has set up. And we're going to teach you to have the boldness on the authority of scripture to say, get off my property. You're about to get ready to take some things back. Your joy, your confidence, your purity. I encourage you go today, go this week, find your gathering. You know what we'll do? We'll gather together. We'll worship God and we're going to love God, love people, enjoy life. See you next week. Love you guys.